Hello and how are you? My name is Mohin Dombar and I welcome you to our third class of learning how to make uh, Android application or mobile applications using uh, Flutter. In today's class, we are going to resume from where we stopped at in the previous class. So if you didn't watch the previous class, I recommend you to go on my YouTube channel and look for the previous classes. We have already covered two classes and make sure that uh, you are on the same page with us in order to do what? To proceed. So, we are going to proceed from the yesterday's class and uh, I'm going to, uh, I've already opened the project that we started yesterday, which you can see here. So right now I'm running it so we can be able to uh, demonstrate everything that we're going to study today. So yesterday we looked at uh, how you can modify your first uh, mobile application and how you can navigate from one screen to another screen. So I'm going to increase the font so you can see things clearly. So things are like that now. So my application is running. I'm going to do what? I'm going to launch it on the screen so you should be able to see it. So that is the app. Yeah, so that is it. So now we're waiting for it to finish running. Let me pin it here so it should always remain on top. Good, good. So yesterday, we were able to move from one screen to another screen by clicking here. And uh, we stopped at the level of formatting the text. So today we're going to proceed with that. Uh, text formatting and you see more things that we can do with the text or how we can modify the text styling. So I'll go ahead and go to the page of uh, text. You remember we said that our pages will be putting them here in this um, uh, pages what? Pages folder or pages directory. So I'll go ahead and open the screen or the page of uh, styling and then you remember we had created this text yesterday and we had uh, passed the parameter of styling and put the text styling of class and then we are starting uh, we had started looking at different things that we can use to style the page, the screen I mean the text and then we are able to put and change this text style color to green and you said you can change it to any color that um, you want for example purple And then you can give it any kind of shade that you want, maybe between uh, 100 up to 1000 with a difference of hundreds. And when you click on save, uh, it will go ahead and update. Then we looked at uh, font size. So we can go ahead and look at other parameters. If you still remember, I told you that if you want to look at other parameters that uh, a certain class can take, you just simply press Ctrl and hold it, then you click on it, then you'll see different parameters. So we're going to look at only important ones. So I've already seen how we can change the color. So there's another thing called background color. So I'll press Ctrl and Tab key to go back to style. And then I'm going to change the what? The background color. So this is another possible parameter. So go ahead and say background color. So this background color can just simply type here. Background color. And then you can give it any color that you want. By simply saying colors dot maybe uh, yellow. Okay, so if you do like this, uh, this pop, I mean this text will have a background color of, of yellow, as you can see there. So you can even change the shading of this yellow. Maybe you can say shade one hundred. So it will be that kind of the color. 
So another thing, so I've, I've, I hope you now know how you change the bubble color part of the text. So another thing that we can possibly uh, do what we can possibly format in this text styling is the font size. Font size we've already seen how we can change the font size. We did that one yesterday. Okay, so another thing that we can do is the So another thing that you can do is changing the font weight. So if you want to change the font weight, you just simply pass font weight. And this one will also take hundreds. Okay, you can either use the font weight and say maybe font weight bold, so it will be bolded. Just write font weight in the capital letter, I mean with the, in, in, in the thermal case. And then you use uh, dot bold, it will be bolded. If you put dot what? Dot, uh, just put dot you'll see possible things so you have dot uh, dot w100 so w100 will give it will make it lighter totally light like uh, very thin as you can see here so if you want that kind of styling you just simply put font weight 100 so if you say font 8 uh, 900 it will be really bold it will be really bolded so you can uh, navigate you can keep on trying different things until you reach the specific design that you do what that you want. For example, if I want it at 100, I can just simply put font weight 100 and then to be that light, as you can see it there. So that is font weight for you. So let's look at another parameter. So I'll press Ctrl and click here again. So font weight, you are finished. There is a font style. So let us look at different things that font style can take. So font style. Um, we have font style, this so way it will take font style class and then put a dot and then you specify the style that you want. So you have dot, dot italics, so it will be in form of what? Of italics. If you put dot uh, maybe normal, it will be normal, something like that. Okay? So if you want to change your font to italics, that's what you do in Flutter. So let us go ahead and look at another thing. We have letter spacing. So if in case you have a specific design that you want, Let's say that maybe you want to, to space your letters, you can as well use letter what? Letter spacing. So letter spacing will take integers, it can take like five. So it means that the distance between the text will be five. If you say like 15, it means that the distance between the text will be 15. Between the letters, it will be what? It will be 15, as you can see there. So if you say maybe one, it will be like uh, the words will be really attached to each other the most minimum as you can see there so according to any design that you want flutter can give it to you uh, through its use of what of parameters then we have word spacing as you can see here so word spacing it will help you to space the words let us say that um uh, we have this word is called simple text like this now if you want to space the words you can as well space the words by using word spacing Okay, so if you say word spacing maybe 10 and uh, maybe the font size maybe it's like uh, uh, 25 so you'll be able to modify the space between two words or between the words themselves so you can see the space between the words is really what is really big because i've increased it to what to 10. so you can see it there so if you say maybe word spacing is um, maybe a five, then it will be what? It will be that less between the word between the words. So with Flutter, you can space, you can create any kind of space that you want between the words or between the text themselves. So you can say maybe the text should be uh, having one spacing, but the words should be having five. So the text will have its own spacing. And the words will have its own spacing. So Flutter gives you almost full control to the text that you want. So uh, we have text baseline, we have text height, you can change text height, we have text foreground, shadows, uh, decoration, and um, other things, decoration color etc. So in your free time, you come and practice these remaining parameters. And how do you get these parameters? You can get these parameters by coming to the text style that you want then press control and click on it and then you're able to do what 
you get the parameters that font style or text style can take. Uh -huh. So more things that you can do here is uh, the text itself, it has more parameters that takes this text widget itself. It has more parameters that it can take. For example, press control and space, you'll see text aligning, okay? So you see text aligning. So this text aligning, it will take text align and then it will have things like uh, center. So center means that the word should be centered. So let us say that you have uh, many words. So words that are really many, more than one line, and then you say text align, and then say text align center. And remember, this is outside the what? Outside the text. So you see, the words will be centered. So if you want it to be maybe um, to be at the end, so you put your text end, it will be on the right hand side. Or you can say text align right, so it will also be on the right hand side. If you want them to be just fine, just simply put text align just fine and then the words will be just fine just fine means that they'll make sure that beginning of each word is big is at the i mean the each word it begins at the what at the former the four most end of each um uh, container of the container that is containing that text so more things that you can do with text is um i think that's it uh, i mean text overflow Okay, so maximum lines, okay, maximum line, in case you want your text not to be more than one line, you can limit here with max lines. So max lines, you can say maybe I want my text to be one line. So you see, the text will be one line. So it will make sure that it does not go beyond one line, you can see here. So there is a way how you may want uh, your text, so you can say maybe I want them to be two lines, so it will be two lines like this, even if there are maybe more than one line. So there is a way that um, you may need to show the user that this text has been truncated or this text has been reduced and uh, you want to communicate to the user's mind. So if you want to show that, you have to pass another parameter called overflow. So overflow will take a class called text overflow and then you put there dot and then you'll see different. When you put dot, you'll see different things that you can take. You have dot ellipsis dot dot fade and then dot visible so let us look at uh, them let us look at them uh, you guys put your emails in the in the chat so i can be able to be inviting you in these classes and when you join you not you will join automatically just put the email in the chat so i can go ahead and say ellipsis so if i say ellipsis it means that um, it will have the dotted lines at the end of what to show that this word has been what has been truncated. So you see those three dotted lines. I mean dot dots. Okay. So if I say um, fade, it will try to make uh, this text to fade in the bottom. So you see how it is kind of fading to show the user that this text has been what has been truncated or has been reduced. You can put other things like uh, visible. So visible is the default word where they will just cut the text. So that is how you can uh, format your what? Your text. So uh, in your free time, uh, come and practice these things. Not even free time. Like if you're really stressed about this, uh, practice these things. So all right. So after that, I'm getting done. So we can proceed to the next layer chapter which is uh, the container. So the container is a uh, kind of a box. If you have ever done web programming, we have something called a div. So a div, it helps you to, to put things in a certain box or in a certain uh, uh, wrap. And then you, you do what? You format everything inside there in that kind of container. So in simple terms, we are going to look at a container. A container is a box that we can use to organize things inside it. Let's say like uh, if you have water and you want to organize this water, what do you do? You put that water in a what? In a cup. So cup is a container. It does not either reduce on water or what, but it's going to control the water that you put in it. Likewise to programming, we have something called containers and one of the containers called uh, is a container. Uh, so we use it to 
organize things inside it. If you have ever done web programming, there's something called div. A div does not add on content, or it does not reduce on content, but it helps you to organize your content. So we are going to look at uh, a container itself in Flutter. So we are going to make it another slide or another topic by just simply coming back to our main topics here. And I'm going to come to our homepage and add another topic of what? Of containers. So I'll come to our homepage here, which is this one, the, the, the what? The, 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 the page. This is the home page and then i'm going to come here and i'm going to copy this and paste it because it's going to be almost the same this list time i'm going to paste it here so when i paste it here i'm going to create another thing called what container maybe container styling container styling and then maybe say how how to style containers that is the description okay and then we can put maybe here a relevant icon which is uh, optional and then this will remain ah, sorry this is still right that is the trailing and this is the leading and then we are going to design a screen or a page for what for container styling case that someone will click here you take them to the container so let's go ahead and do that we will come here to text styling since it's almost the same i'm going to duplicate this text styling and create another page for container i'll copy it this screen i'll copy ctrl c and then i paste it i've just copied this file right click here and then say copy the file copy and then I paste it in the pages again. Okay, so this is going to be number two, and I'm going to call it container styling. So you can put your maybe container styling page, something like that. So you can be able to always remember. So I'll press enter. So I'll have here number two called container styling page. So I'm going to come here and change this one to container styling, the name of the class. And always make sure the name of the class begin with the capital letter and it is in camo case like this container styling command change this one here so i hope you've understood how we've done that one so i'll come here and change the title to container styling okay so after doing that i'll come here and remove maybe this text okay I can just remove everything. Okay, let me remove this text. And then we'll have something called placeholder and put the article placeholder like this. So that widget is what I put there. So after doing that, uh, we're going to now add this container. So I hope you've seen what we've just done. So this is just a page of styling the container. So we're going to create this page. I mean, we're going to uh, connect this page with the home page so when someone clicks on this it should be able to be taken to this page of container styling so we'll come here to our home page and then paste here this class okay so when someone clicks here it should be taken there so this class if it is not important you just move your mouse there and then press alt and enter and then you'll see these options and then say import so when they import it then someone will be able to do it to click here and then they are taken to this container styling page so let's write i'll go ahead and click on container styling and you can see i'm taken to this container styling page so i'm going to press ctrl and click on this container styling page so i can be navigated straight to the container styling page and you can see i'm now there so in here we're going to put uh, our container and we see how we can play with that container so to put a container, you just remove this placeholder and put a what? Container. Okay. So you open, bracket and close it. So after doing that, a container is just nothing. It's just an empty box, but it can help us to organize something. So there it is. Okay. So this container takes uh, takes uh, content. Okay. So the content that takes we pass it let me first disable this uh, 
suggestion tool so I can be able to alright so this container it takes uh, different things I mean it takes content okay so the content that it takes we call it um, I mean the content it takes it I mean the content that it stores or the code that it displays, it takes it through a parameter called child. So it expects only one what? One child or one particular content. So we just simply put child. So if you want, let's say that you want to display there text and say this is container. So you just simply say child and then put call and then go ahead and say text. And then say this is container. So by doing like this, You'll be able to see your container like that okay so you see the container and uh, with the word so if you've not formatted the container you'll not be able to see that even the container is there but the reality is you can see this container is containing this child so you can press ctrl and alt and letter l to organize your code ctrl alt and l to organize your code so there we are and we have this kind of a content so now we are going to start formatting this container until uh, we know what to, how we do, the best we can do out of it so uh, to format the container we we'll just simply come here to container the first thing that we are going to we have already given it a child so the, the second thing that we are going to do there is to give it the color for the background color so we can be able to see this container so we can give it a background color by passing what we call color parameter like this then you put colors dot maybe red so by doing like this this container is going to be shaded red so you're not able to see where this container begins and where it ends so i can just maybe give it maybe red like pure red like a totally deep red like 800 darker red and then maybe i can come and style this text now you know how to style the text and change maybe it's font to yeah it font color to uh to white all right so you press Ctrl and Alt, you hold them, and then press letter L to organize your code automatically. So there we are. So you can see this is a container, and uh, it is being surrounded by that. Okay, so let me increase on the font. All right, so let's go back now to formatting the container itself. So now this container has its own uh, parameters that you can take and then after we we'll look at different parameters that uh, we can take through decoration or through the through styling it so if you want to look at the parameters that you can take i can press code i mean i can press uh control and click on the container itself then i'll be able to see the parameters that it can take so we're going to look at the most important ones the rest will just uh, uh, leave them for you to practice so the first parameter that it takes is the alignment like how uh, do you want to organize the content that are inside this container okay so is that is that's what we call what uh, alignment okay so to do that we'll just simply come here and uh, pass what you call alignment so alignment it takes alignment dot what dot different example dot center so if you say dot center it will center the content that are inside it uh -huh. if you say so you see everything has been centered okay so if you say dot uh, center bottom it will try to center the content in its bottom if it, ha it has like full access to the screen so you can see the content has been centered to bottom here so if you say maybe uh center right center i mean center uh top 
I mean top center so it will make it to be on top and center and then maybe you can say maybe center right so to make it to be centered but on the right hand side so this gives you power uh, to control the content that you want to organize in your what in your container so I'm going just to make it I'm going to okay let me just keep it there center there where, there where it is so all right so after doing that so I've really seen uh, different ways of how you can center content in a container so if you want it like really really in the center just simply put at center and then to make it uh, centered so another thing that you can look at container is the padding so you may ask what is padding so padding is the distance between the content inside the container and the margin of the container i repeat padding is the distance between the content inside the container and the margin of the container in simple terms padding is the distance between this red color here where this one begins and then up to this content and where this is on top of this and then up to this this and this and then this and this so that's what you call what that's what you call padding so we have different ways of how you can pad content so let me go ahead and add more content so we can have enough content and we demonstrate the padding properly and you get the idea so assume that you have that much content so when i save you'll see the content is uh, really too much so let me go ahead and maybe say just fight uh, and i just write so come here to text and say align so you can see we have there so now how can we demonstrate the padding okay so if I want to demonstrate the padding we will come to our container here so make sure that you're in the right place and then so here this is the container and then put padding so padding takes a parameter called edge insets okay edge insects so edge insects it has the way how you can uh, it, it helps you uh, in different ways of how you can create the spacings okay so now to get this edge insert just simply type edge and then say insects like this so this edge insects it can take different things just simply put dot so this the edge insect has a different method that is attached to it the first one is zero so this zero means that it should give like zero spacing then the next one is the dot only so only it will only allow you to specify specific ends that you want to create a specific spacing then symmetric it will allow you to specify uh, maybe either vertical or horizontal and then we have that all all it means that it should specify you, you like you will enter only one specify for all of them okay and then we have left to right i mean left top right and bottom that's what we call from ltr b that one will help you just to simply specify the numbers without doing work without um, uh, specifying whether it is top or bottom but this one you um, have to enter all of them so now let us go ahead and uh, try this first one only so if you say edge insert dot only we can be able to specify we say left so when you say left it means that we're going to specify between this content between this margin the left margin and the what and the uh, content in the in the left on the left margin so we can just simply go and say for example 15 takes uh, a double value so if i say 15 it will create the distance between these two 15 pixels you understand so that is left so if i say maybe 25 you'll see the distance between the left margin and the content is 25 
So I can go ahead and specify maybe and say write. So when you say write, you can also specify maybe write is five. So to create a very small distance between the right margin and the content. So I can maybe also write is 25. So you see that it will try to squeeze and make sure that uh, there is no content inside it that is passing through the margin that you that you specified. So you can also go ahead and specify top and bottom, but because we don't have uh, content on top, then you may not be able to see it. But let us say maybe this content is just uh, on top. On top. So it is now on top there. So if I want to specify the margin from, I mean the padding from top, I can just simply say top and then I say 15. So it will also create the distance between the top margin and the content to 15. If I say 25, it will also make the distance between 25. So that is dot only. Okay. So you have another one called, let me comment this. So you have another one called dot what dot all. Dot all, it will make all of them to have that particular distance that you want. For example, if I just say 25, so it will make sure that the top, the bottom, the right, all of the all of the padding, all of the the margin between the content and the margin is what is uh, 25 distance. So that is the what the dot all. So you can go ahead and play with this until you really get the whole concept. So this padding will help you to organize your content in exact way that you do what that you want. So you have another one called margin. So margin is the distance between the container and the is the distance between the container and the container that contains it. Let us say that maybe our body is having a background color. Let us say our scaffold. This scaffold, you can give it a background color of black. Okay. So it means that the scaffold itself, it is having the black color. Though we are not seeing it because, because the container is spending like 100% of the water of the distance. So I've looked at padding. So the margin is the distance between the container and the container that contains it. So now margin also takes almost same parameters. Okay, it also takes edge insets, and then you can say maybe margin edge insert and say dot all. So we go ahead and put 25. So what will happen? It will create a margin between the container and the container that contains it and put 25. So you can see we're having the black, which is the scaffold itself that we have given background of black, and then <coughs> the container, which is uh, the red one, which it has created the margin between it uh, that is red. I mean, so let me give you maybe a yellow so you can have a clear view. So the scaffold is the container that contains this container, it's having yellow color, and then the container is this one that has created the margin between it and the container that contains it of 25. So likewise here, you can specify uh, using, uh, for example, dot only. Okay, so I can say the margin only should be on the left. So I say maybe it is, should be 25 like this. So it will make the margin only on the left and it will be 25 as you can see the margin is only on the left. I can say maybe the margin on the right and it should be maybe 5. So you can see the margin on the right, it is going to be 5 here. I hope you can see that. So you can uh, do anything that you want with either margin or what or the padding. So you should understand the concept here. The padding is between the container in subject and the content that is inside it. Then the margin is between the container in subject and the container that contains it. So I hope you've understood uh, those two concepts because they are very, very what? Very important. So let us go ahead and look at uh, more things that we can <coughs> do with the container. So another thing is the width. So this width is uh, the one that we use to specify the width of the container. So we can say maybe this container should have a width of maybe 
300 pixels, 400 pixels. So I can just simply put 400. So the container will make sure that it has the width of what? Of 400. So I can say maybe 200. So you see, it has been spaced to what? To 200. So you can also specify the height of the what? Of the container. So if I say 100, now the content that it is in this container is more than 100. So it will do what? It will have to chop it off. So you see, this is simply a container that will have specified its width and what? And height. Okay, so you've understood that. So another thing, uh, we can also uh, now go to the container uh, decoration. So the container decoration So now the main parameter today is the container decor decoration that we're going to look right now. Let me first comment this uh, with that. So let me maybe put the okay, so yeah, that's enough, that's good. Okay, so now the container decoration is the one that we use to decorate the container. So you can press control and click and see and here and then we'll see the parameter that takes takes what we call decoration. So this decoration you can simply pass it here, decoration decapulate, and then you you put a bracket, I mean, sorry, put a dot. So we have different de of de decorations. So the first one is called the box decoration. So this box decoration will be able to do what? To take different parameters, okay? So this is a container and it's having a decoration parameter. And then we are taking it, we are passing a box decoration. So when I save, I remember I've removed this, uh, I've commented this width and height. So there it is. So uh, decoration does not allow you to pass the color because decoration also comes with the color. So you have also to make sure that the color is not there because decoration can pass its own color. So if you don't know that, you can suffer with that error. So I've commented the color. So now, our container is there but it is transparent that's why you're able to see only the color behind it which is that of the scaffold so you are passing here a decoration so we're going to look at different things that the decoration can take let me first make sure that uh, maybe it is also having here all margin as 25 so you can have a well boxed container like this. so now what a different thing that this box decoration can take so press control and click on it you'll be able to see them here the first thing is the color. So if you want to pass the color, you can simply say color and then say maybe red. And then you'll be able to see the color. So if you pass the color outside, it will not allow you to again pass the decoration. So if you, if you want to pass everything, I mean the, the, the decoration, then you'll have to pass even the color with using the, what, the decoration. So there we are. So the first thing that I've looked at the decoration can take is the color. So the next thing that the decoration can take is the, let us go ahead and look at, is the background image, okay? So you can pass the background image. However, this one will look at it later after we've looked at the asset images. So another thing that the, the container, I mean the, the decoration can take is the border. So I can go ahead here and give it what you call border parameter. Okay, so the border can take what you call border and then then put like a border then say dot all. So when you say dot all, it will be able, it will allow you to format the border around the whole container. Okay, so this border, for example, border can have things like color. So when you say color, it will be able to allow you to give the border color. For example, I can say color should be red. So the border is there, but has the color of red. So you cannot see the border right now. Why? Because you have not specified the width of the border. So you press Ctrl and Enter, and then you go ahead and say width. So you can say maybe the width of the border should be five. So you'll see that uh, now the width of the border is there. So you can see that um, this container that we created, it is having a decoration 
and the decoration gives it a border and the border we have specified should be what it should be this color so i can go ahead and say maybe this one should be black as the main container and then maybe the border should be uh, yellow and then the color inside the container should be red so by doing like this, you'll be able to have something like kind of a Vienna flag, black and red, something like that. But what is not happening, let me see, like this. So we have black, yellow, red. So, however, the main point here is the what? Is the border that we just created right now. So you can change the width of the border, maybe to be 25. So you should be knowing what is not happening. Let me see where the error is coming from. So you can press here and see the error. So black does not have the shade, you should always know that. Yes. So there we go. So you have black, yellow, red. Okay. So this first one is caused by the margin. The second one is called by is caused by the border. Then the in one the inside one is the what? Is the container color inside it so you can have something like that so you can play with it until uh, you make uh, different things okay so that is uh, uh, the border on the all sides okay so this uh, stroke line I don't know it let me see what text text border stroke line inside So we have other things called the uh, border style and then border style by default is sold that's how we added it uh, how you can even make it uh, of different values if you want to so that is how you create uh, the borders of a part of a container so let us uh, look at one more thing because our time is up which is uh, the border radius so we call it a day so border radius you can just simply come here and come and trace and put border radius so this border radius it will take different things okay so border radius to take border radius and then can have dot all dot only and um, vertical and horizontal so let us say and circular so if you want like a circular border you can just simply say border radius circular and then you pass here uh, maybe how circular you want it so if I do like this you'll be able to see that I'm, it's going to implement a 10 radius on each border you can see that so if I make it maybe 25, we'll be able to see that uh, it's going to make it uh, 25 on each side. So if I make it maybe like uh, like super big, it will try to make this one to become that a thousand board and then we'll be able to achieve that. So if we had like a uh, width of, uh, let's say, uh, 300 by 300, height 300 and width 300, then you'll end up with a what? With a perfect circle because it can go beyond that one. That one. So you'll end up with something like this. So there are so many things that you can do with this. So in your free time, come and practice as many containers as you want and try as many things as you want. So that is uh, the border circle. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, try another border type uh, such as border dot only uh -huh. so here you'll be able to specify top right top left top bottom something like that bottom left and bottom right so if i say maybe top right so it will allow me to format only uh sorry here it will take border circle radius say maybe 25 so like this it will be able to format only the top 
right side okay so here it's just because it is too big so you may not be able to relate but you can even make it like a kind of a smaller container and then you format it in any way that you want okay let's say maybe like say have like 15 you can have something like that so you see this is the top right so you can even maybe maybe go ahead and, and format maybe the uh, bottom left and then you pass this then you'll be able to see that you created that design or you have uh, this side for uh, rounded and this side for rounded so you can make as uh, any design as you want and uh, you get that experience of creating different what different user interfaces all what you need is to practice until you make sure that you understand almost everything so uh, that's pretty much of how we can uh, design a container so you can go ahead and uh, make much more research uh, so in the next class we can um, take it to another level such as uh, the layouts like uh, like uh, columns, uh, stack, rows, flex, etc. So make sure that uh, you practice and uh, make sure that you understand everything that we are teaching. Otherwise, uh, if you just watch without practicing, then uh, you'll be just wasting time because you will not understand until you put your hands there. And in case it is hard, uh, don't give up because it is possible. You're not the first to do it. We are all doing it so it is possible you can do it so in case like you're really really stuck and you cannot move to the next level you can contact me and i'll be able to do what to help you so make sure that you subscribe to the youtube channel make sure that you share with your friends so that they can maybe also learn you never know uh if you share with a friend maybe they even that friend can like it more than you and they learn more things make it maybe their own career so let us meet in the next class make sure that we practice this video we meet in the next class we're going to take it from there i will share the link of uh, this video after i've uploaded it and uh in the next class we do what we proceed from there all right uh see you and uh goodbye